One and Only Ivan, page 210 to page 229. Angry. Thump. The sound, my sound, echoes through the mall. George and Julia spin around. Julia drops her backpack and George drops his keys. The pile of pictures goes flying. Thump, thump, thump. I bounce off the walls. I screech and bellow. I beat and beat and beat my chest. Bob hides under no tag, his paws over his ears. I'm angry at last. I have someone to protect. Puzzles and pieces. After a long while, I grow quiet. I sit. It's hard work being angry. Julia looks at me with wide, disbelieving eyes. I'm painting and I'm a little out of shape. I'm panting. I'm a little out of shape. What the heck was that? George demands. Something's really wrong, Julia says. I've never seen Ivan act this way. He seems to be calming down. Thank goodness, George says. Julia shakes her head. He's still upset, Dad. Look at his eyes. My pictures are scattered all over the floor like huge autumn leaves. What a mess, George says, sighing. I wish I, had, I hadn't bothered sweeping up tonight. Do you think Ivan's okay, Julia asked? Probably just a temper tantrum, George says. He reaches under the, a chair to retrieve a brown and red picture. Can't say I blame the guy stuck in the tiny cage all these years. Julia starts to answer, but then she freezes. She cocks her head. She stares at her feet. Where my pictures lie in the disarray. Dad, she whispers, come see this. I'm sure he's another Rembrandt, George says. Let's pick these up and get going, Jules. I'm exhausted. Dad, she says again, seriously, look at this. George follows her gaze. Gaze. I see blobs, many, many blobs, along with occasional swirl. Please, can we go home now? That's an H, Dad. Julia kneels down, straightening one picture, then another. That's an H. And here, she grabs more pictures. Put this one here, and I don't know, but maybe that one. You have an E. George, rub, George rubs his eyes. I hold my breath. Julia is running now. She picks up one picture, sets down another. It's like a puzzle, Dad. This is something. It's a word, maybe words. And a picture of something, a giant picture. Jules, George says. This is crazy, but he's looking at the floor, too, wondering. From picture to picture and scratching his head. H, Julia says. E, O. O? Julia chews her lower lip. H, E, O. And that looks a lot like an I. H-E-O-I. George writes in the air with his finger. E-I-O-H. Not the letter. An actual I. And that's a foot or maybe a tree, a trunk. Dad, I think that's a trunk. Julia runs to my window. Ivan, she whispers. What did you make? I stare back. I cross my arms. This is taking much longer than I would thought it would. Humans. Sometimes they make chimps look smart. Finally, Julia and George take the pictures to the ring, where there's room to see them all. An hour passes as they try to assemble my puzzle. Ruby's awake now, and she and Bob and I watch. Ivan, Ruby says, is that a picture of me? Yes, I say proudly. Where am I supposed to be? That's a zoo, Ruby. See, the walls and the grass and the people looking at you? Ruby squints. Who are all those other elephants? You haven't met them, I say, yet. It's a very nice zoo, Ruby says with an approving nod. Bob nudges me with his cold nose. It is indeed. In the ring, Julia pumps her fist in the air. Yes, she cries. I told you, Dad. There it is. Home. George gazes at the letters. He spins around to look at me. Maybe it's just a coincidence, Jules. You know, a once in a trillion kind of thing. Like that old saying about the chimp and the typewriter. Give him long enough and he'll write you a novel. I make a grumbling noise, as if a chimp could write a letter, let alone a book. Then how do you explain the rest of it, Julia demands, the picture of Ruby 
in the zoo. How do you know it's a zoo, George asks. See the circle on the gate? There's a red giraffe in it. George squints and tilts his head. Are you sure it's a giraffe? I was thinking more along the lines of a deformed cat. It's the logo for the zoo, Dad. It's on all their signs. Ex explain that. George gives her a helpless smile. Or a, yeah, I can't. I can't begin to. I'm just saying there has to be a logical explanation. Look how big this is, Julia puts the last piece of Ruby, Ruby's right ear into place. It's huge. It's definitely large, George agrees. Julia watches me. She chews on her thumbnail. I see the question in her eyes. She turns back to the paintings and stares at them, looking, truly looking. A slow smile dawns, dawns on Julia's face. Dad, she says, I have an idea, a big idea. Julia races around the edge of my painting, her arms spread wide. Billboard big. I'm not following you. I think this is meant to be on the billboard. and That's what Ivan wants. George crosses his arms over his chest. What Ivan wants, he repeats slowly. And you know this because you two have been chatting? Because I am an artist, and he is an artist. Uh-huh, says George. Julia clasps her hands together. Come on, Dad, I'm begging you. George shakes his head. No, I'm not doing that. No billboard, no way. I'll get the ladder, Julia says. You get the glue. I know it's dark out, but the billboard, billboard's lit. Mac will fire me, Jules. Julia considers, but think of the publicity, Dad. Everybody would know about Ruby. You want me to put up a sign that shows Ruby in a zoo with the word home on it in giant letters. George gestures toward my picture. A sign, incidentally, that just happens to have been made by a gorilla. Exactly. <clears throat> and you want me to do it without Mac's permission, George asks. Exactly. No, George says. No way. Julia goes to the edge of the ring, careful not to step on any of my paintings. She picks up Mac's claw stick. She walks back and hands it to her father. George runs a finger along the blade. She's just a baby, Dad. Don't you want her to get help? But how would it help, Jules? Even if lots of people see Ivan's sign, it doesn't mean anything's going to change. I'm not exact, exactly sure yet, Julia shakes her head. Maybe people will see the sign and they'll know this isn't where Ruby belongs. And maybe they'll want to help too. George sighs. He looks at Ruby. She waves her trunk. It's a matter of principle, Dad. Principal. L-E, George corrects. Dad, Julia says softly, what if Ruby ends up like Stella? George looks at me and Ruby and at Julia. He drops the claw stick. The latter, he says quietly, is in the storage locker. The next morning, the next morning, okay, the interview. I watch Mac's car slam to a halt in the parking lot. He leaps out. He stares at the billboard. His jaw is open. He doesn't move for a long time. Mad human. A mad gorilla is loud, but a mad human can be loud too, especially when he's throwing chairs and turning over tables and breaking cotton candy machines. Phone call. Mac is kicking a trash can across the food court when the phone rings. He answers it. A red faced and sweating. What the? He demands. He glares at me. I don't know what your... He starts to say, but then he stops to listen. Who? Julia who? He asks. Oh, sure. George's kid. He's the one who called you. More talking with the phone to his ear. Mac comes closer to my cage, eyeing me suspiciously. Yeah, yeah, he says. He, he paints. Sure. We've been selling his art for quite a while now. There's nothing. There's another long pause. Yeah, absolutely. It was my idea. Mac nods. A smile starts at the corners of his mouth. Photos? No problem. You want to see them in action? Come on down. Have a look. We're open 365 days a year. Can't miss us. Right? We're right off I-95. Mac picks up the overturned trash can. Yeah, I think he'll be adding more pics pictures. It's a, you know, what do you call it? A work in progress. 
When the call is done, Max shakes his head and possibly says, an hour later, a man with a camera comes to take my picture. He is from the local paper, the one Julia called. How about you take one of me with the elephant, Max suggests. He drapes his arm around Ruby's back, grinning as the camera clicks. Perfect, the man says. Perfect, Mac agrees. A star again. A photo of my, bill of my billboard is in the newspaper. Mac tapes the story onto my window. Each day, more curious people arrive. They park in front of the billboard. They point and shake their heads. They take photos. Then they come into the mall and buy my paintings. While the visitors watch, I dip my hands into the fresh buckets of paint. I make pictures for the gift shop and pictures to add to the billboard. Trees with birds, a new moored elephant with glittering black eyes, a squirrel, a bluebird, a worm. I even paint Bob so that he can be on the billboard too. I can tell he likes the picture, although he says he didn't, I didn't quite capture his distinguished nose. Every afternoon, Mac and George add my new pictures to the billboard. People slow their cars while they work. Drivers honk and wave. My gift shop pictures now cost $65 with frame. The Ape Artist. I have new names. People call me the Ape Artist, the Primate Picasso. I have visitors from morning till night, and so does Ruby. But nothing's changed for her every day at 2, 4, 7. Ruby plods through the sawdust with Snickers on her back. Every night, she has bad dreams. Bob, I say after I've soothed Ruby to sleep with a story, my idea isn't working. Bob opens one eye. Be patient. I'm tired of being patient, I say. The interview. And there it is.